Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. How are you doing today? I have a special guest for you today, this Father's Day weekend. Yes, today is Father's Day when we are recording this. How are you doing, Mr. Williams? How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, thank you for having me on your show, Michael. Thanks, man. And, and happy Father's Day. It's, uh, it's, it's a day to remember. And uh, It is, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, happy uh, Father's Day to you. I know you have a daughter. And I've got uh, twins and, a, and an eight-year-old downstairs. So 12-year-old twins, boy and a girl, and an eight-year-old downstairs. Oh, very cool. We've already done our our happy Father's Day moment. So, well, very yeah. cool. Well, thank you for being a part of my Father's Day morning. I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, also, you are a student of my course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. So why don't we talk about how you stumbled across One Rental at a Time? I sure. think it was sparked by a Bigger Pockets interview, but why don't we start there? Yeah. So, um, yeah, a little bit about me. So I was uh, watching YouTube during my hours of work, trying to stay productive, but also have something in my ears um, mm -hmm. and started getting into real estate investing videos. And I uh, first started to watch Grant Stefan, but he's all over the place. He didn't <laughs> quite connect with me. Um, I like his channel. I like how, how transparent he is, yeah. but it's a lot. Um, and everybody talks about the biggest pockets episode 302 or 300. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to give myself an hour and I'll listen to the, the epic bigger pockets 300. Um, right around that time was when uh, Dion uh, mm -hmm. from Dion Talk had yep. his episode post. Mm -hmm. uh, so time, well, okay, I'll watch this new one from Dion. Dion mentioned your book, One Rental at a Time, yeah, uh, in the course, and I was like, well, that's interesting. I think I'll get that book. So there was uh, two books I got. I got the One Rental at a Time uh, book from you, and I forget the author's name, but the my life, my wife loves, hates real estate ah. uh, book from the episode 300 were the kind of the two big books that I wanted to read and research more about. Cool. And um, uh, yeah, and your, your message just resonated, right? It was easy to, for me to understand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, find a deal, get that deal, get its cash flow, work on the next deal. Yeah. 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 It, makes, it makes it so simple. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot there's you know there's a lot of um, right the real estate or investing or coaching or whatever you want to call that world. Uh, a lot of people just do it for the cachet, right? They're they're talking bigger is better, syndication, go big or go home. And something you'll always find with me is I just talk about what I did, and you know, hey, I got one, and then we started working on number two, and we got number two, we started working on number three. So, yeah, one thing I'm gonna always stay true to is, hey, what do we do? And uh, yeah, D Dion is awesome. And one thing I love about the How to Get Started One Rental at a Time course is, again, I only do what I do, but I invite others who have expertise like Dion, right? He, he's done a self-management section and uh, we got private money and all of these other things. So I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Dion. And uh, I love the fact that that book is meaning, right? This, this book right here is meaning more and more to folks. So yeah. This book right here? Yeah, that one right there. <laughs> I like that book. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, um, I know you're a member of my uh, course and yeah. uh, I did a video, I think it was, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday. I do so many talking about hedge funds. Uh, I think it was specifically BlackRock because they were just getting trashed in the media. And uh, you reached out and said, you know what, they're, they're, you know, a hedge fund. We don't know which one, but there's a hedge fund in my market. So why don't we talk about what you are seeing uh, and really break down what I would do and things of that nature. But let's just talk about you know, you have somebody in your backyard. Which, tell tell us which market it is. Yeah. Uh, and yeah we'll so I live in the I live in the Memphis metro area. Uh, mm -hmm. Memphis is kind of unique because it's a city at the bottom left of a state. So we have suburbs that are in Mississippi and northern Mississippi, and suburbs around uh, the the city. Um, okay. You know, kind of commenting off of the your daily news when you first kind of talked about this topic of, uh, about Memphis. Yeah. Um, Probably starter homes, I'm guessing around the area, C to B to A properties are some 50 to 250 in okay. a, like three bedroom, two bath home range um, okay. these days. Um, so it's a very affordable place to live as well. Um, and uh, I kind of got to go back a little bit to go forward. But sure. um, in 2017, uh, my wife and I moved from South Haven, which is a suburb in upper Mississippi, to Memphis. And um, my the recovery was slow, pretty slow in uh, Mississippi. I remember in 
uh, it was even as late as 2012, 2013, we still had some foreclosures on our street mm. from the initial crash that occurred in 2008. Okay. Um, so values didn't rise for a while. Mm. Um, so we didn't sell. So I kind of stumbled into landlording. Um, and what I discovered doing so, just putting my house on the market and letting renters come in is one, I really enjoyed the, the tax benefits and the appraisal and the cash flow. Yeah. And so I was like, there's something, yeah, there's something here. Um, but the other thing I learned was that there was a very common theme in the mm -hmm. area, right? I'd go to Zillow, I'd type up what are the rents for the area, I'd look at all the active listings, and you know, eight out of 10 had the same watermark across the area, right? Yeah. Um, and so at the time, I didn't even think it was a hedge fund. I was just like, wow, this, you know, there's this big fish yeah. running, running the market in the area. Um, and again, and this was, this was 18, 2018, this was 2007, so it's probably 2017, 18. Okay. All right. You know, so my, my, I had two turns, I had two turns in two years. Um, okay. and my, my rental strategy was be a hundred dollars less than the watermarks. Got so it. I would go to Zillow. They'd be all over the place. I'd be the one that showed up smaller. Yeah. And then, and then, I'd, and then I'd get all the views. Right. Ah, so, um, so I'm sure there's a, there's lots of other mom and pops in the area doing doing similar things, but sure. Um, but the flash flash forward to today, uh, you know, I closed on my second property with my father um, just last or on June 10th. Nice. Right? So another one of these amazing things. Oh, you got one already! Yes, got one of these cards for everybody to see. That's awesome. Um, and uh, you know, uh, we same thing started a get ready to get prepared, figure out what our rents were. Yeah. Same watermark all through the place. It's almost to the point where, um, like Laura Bailey says, she's able, or I'm sorry, uh, the REI, Mo, REI mom. Yeah, says Anna Kelly, able, yep. Uh, Anna Kelly. She's able to, uh, you know, make sure rents are where she wants them to be because she mm -hmm. has enough of the market to do so. Yeah. I think there's, that's what's happening in our area as well. Interesting. And so I went back and kind of just thought about uh, my process and how I ended up with this property. Okay. And I actually, there's actually just a very interesting sweet spot point. We'll get to it. But um, there, you know, I was doing daily work. Yeah. Um, on my spreadsheet, uh, average across the Memphis metro area for what I wouldn't want to buy. Yeah is about nine percent that's awesome yeah let's just remind people right yeah. if you if you if you haven't got the course yet you may not know what john's talking about but again what i do is i smack you in the face right out of the gate i make you do the work make you create your buying box your criteria the whole idea is to figure out average just as john said and his average is nine percent so what he's telling us is oh by the way if nine percent's average you know i got to do better than that so uh this is what i'm this is what I talk about all the time. It's just like focus daily execution, focus daily execution. So first off, congratulations. And oh, by the way, you got one of those cards to prove it's yeah, working. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just say, uh, I'll be the last thing I say to you, but you know, do the work every day, trust in the system, enjoy the process. Yes, enjoy you the process. Get one of these this year, it can be done. All right. Um, that's awesome. So uh, yeah, so I was doing the work every day and then, you know, a, a deal would pop. I'd be nine, 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 twelve. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one. So that that one's the one to go for. All right. So it's nine, 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 twelve, eight, six, five. You know, seventeen. It's like exactly right. And so, uh, and that's just daily look at the MLS with the criteria. Um, and just, I just want people to realize how long. So, how many days have you looked in a row, roughly? So I I started working actively. Uh, probably in March, right? So, All right, so you're March, about a hundred days. May, yeah, March, April, and May. I started looking every day. Folks, I keep uh, telling you, it takes. Yeah, a hundred days is awesome. During that time, mm -hmm. was uh, the supply was so low, I couldn't do your just pick one zip code. Sure, you have to modify. So, right? I, to get to fifty properties, just to get to fifty properties, I had to just keep adding yeah. zip codes that I liked in the area. Yeah, of course. So, are you? Is it? Is it? Are you collapsing that now as more inventory comes or not yet? Yeah. So what's, what's interesting is I did, so I have, I have a search on about nine zip codes in the okay. city. 
All right. About four produced properties. <laughs> that are pretty consistent. So, and so it's, I probably look at a little bit too much. That's um, okay. There's quite a few. There's quite a few areas of town that are very much. They've become very much the a the boardwalk and yeah, the you can side of the, of the yeah. Um, and so you know, one of the things I've done is that even though there are some of those, I've always just called that. There's 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 tiny parts. There's an area of our town. I'll go ahead and say it, there's an area of our town which is very right now it's a very fancy very up and coming mm. uh you know values are going crazy it's it's more closer to what you guys see in the west coast than what we see here that oh parts, wow. the parts in the area right? yeah um you know, like the houses for sale now the, the mcmansions are um a lot more than i ever thought they'd be you know 10 20 years ago just, just even paying attention to you know uh the area so I was like, well, I want a unicorn. I want a house that is uh, under $200,000 that was built a while ago, that's still in that zip code, still has that great school district. You know, I'll just look every day. I'll never find it, but I'll look every day in that zip code. Right? Yeah. And my last deal was a unicorn. I actually ended up with yes. uh, a house in Collierville that popped on the list. Um, and it was... Uh, if I had just done 25% down, it was about an 11% um, deal. But the, by this time, I've gotten so excited about doing the daily work and finding yeah. deals that when I found, found one, I would immediately send a link to my father. He owns about five uh, rental homes right now. Nice. And so, you know, he started to get more excited about getting one too. He, his view is, uh, I don't want to make 0.1%. Yeah, percent a year. Crazy. Right? <laughs> Good and for so him. He's like, even if I pay the whole thing and we only make five percent, that's better than than point oh one. That's awesome. So the first thing I did was like, hey dad, check out this great twenty and twenty yeah. and six note that, that yeah. I can create. Yeah, <laughs> look at you. Yeah, he didn't want to. He didn't want to <laughs> be a part of that. So I've always kind of dreamed about being a partner anyway. So we went. We we became partners. That's we awesome. We found we were in different spots. All right, I want to get great thirty year money. He wants to pay up front. Sure. It all paid off. Um, so there's been ups and downs there. Uh, but uh, so we started our journey, we started searching. And before we found the unicorn, uh, we found a place that was a deal, went five over, like, because we knew it was the craziest, you know, time in the market with no, yeah. supply, no supply. Five over, nothing, right? All right, yeah. okay, we can find the next deal. 10 over, nothing, nothing. Yeah. right? And so I started just, I have a, I have a realtor team in Tennessee and I have a realtor team in Mississippi. Okay. And I started just asking them, them like, like bluntly, bluntly. I was like, what is going on? Like everybody, like it's the, the, the routine was find a deal 7 PM at night doing daily work, find a 15 minute viewing, viewing window the next day get a deadline offer in the next day and you know, cross your fingers and wait. Right. Yeah. I was like, what is happening right now? Why is it so like, yeah. I get so frustrating. And the answer I got back was there is, I, I want there's hedge funds or California money. <laughs> and I said, well, what is Damn Californians? Like, I know what's California money. Right. And, you know, uh, started to kind of just understand and, and, uh listen to them and i started to see what they what was being bought right and you know what i found was in the in the memphis metro area any you know single family home that is uh built after 1980s yeah um with uh up to uh, three hundred thousand dollars okay um i didn't know i didn't get specific to threes and fours versus you know ones and, and fives um, but that's a pretty broad box, right? Yeah. Cause I was, it was, it was happening in Mississippi. It's happening in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I started to think about, you know, as it was, was my box, was my box for the unicorns and a and B properties too, too high of a level, yeah. right? I started to think I was swimming in the wrong sea. Um, and so, you know, that's what I started just really getting to know my agents really well. Yeah. Um, and one of them told me that, well, there's, you know, I just lost on a house and I did $20,000 over. And I was like, man, a lot. $20,000 yeah. over list price and you still didn't get it. 
he said, I got down to the last day. And then they said, uh, I don't know his name. So I'm just going to pick a name. They said, Bob got it. And then they're like, well, who's Bob? Right. Oh, Bob's the agent for the California money. He drives the yellow Lamborghini. <laughs> the damn yellow Lamborghini. And I was like, and I was like, I recall a yellow Lamborghini in South Haven, right? And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Um, and a <laughs> yellow met, Lamborghini. I've never met Bob. I don't know, you know, how well he's doing it, but he's got a uh, yellow. Lamborghini. He's clearly doing okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and um, then I started to hear, no, oh, Bob doesn't have a yellow Lamborghini. Bob's got a green Lamborghini. Oh, shit. right. And it was like, okay, well, it's either two Lamborghinis <laughs> or it's. One with you know two paint jobs or yeah. two with two two tone paint. Yeah, okay. crazy. I bet he's got two Lamborghinis, right? He's doing um, okay, this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's so you know when I think back on getting to the unicorn, putting it all in circle, I think I actually hit a point where the head offers were coming in, but competition was already at twenty twenty five over. Yeah, and several cash offers were happening. Sure, right. Yeah, And so um, I think the hedge fund is now trying to stand out with a sticker shock. Yeah. Right? Like, mm-hmm. so I'll go into the details of, of what I know. Yeah. I, the previous owner of the property I just bought told me a lot. She shared a lot. I'm sure. She yeah. ran into me while I was, while I was walking out doing an inspection and she just, she just gave me a whole bunch. The of real things. world. Yeah. Yeah. So she said she had an office. So she listed for 180. Okay. Um, we closed for 205. Okay. So I was I was going in. It was a unicorn. I was going to swing hard, but my father yeah. and I went in for five over. Okay. She had an offer for 230. Wow. But in the fine print said 15% over appraisal. Got it. Okay. And so she was terrified because she was listed at 180 and the neighborhood um, is a is I would almost say it's like a forgotten part of Carrierville, right? The rest okay. of Carrierville has gotten expanded and exploded. Um, the neighborhood is, is smaller, smaller homes. There's a, the neighborhood right behind my house uh, sells for on average for 450. For oh, example. wow. Like just across the fence line, I bought a house for 205, right? Nice. Um, so I think she was really scared that it was going to appraise low. And so she was like, I'm not going to go for that offer. It's not going to like your, your offer is just as good as that. And I was yeah. like, well, I'm, yeah, I was like, yeah, take mine. <laughs> right? yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> like, that's a thing. Fantastic. But yeah, so I think I hit a sweet spot where the investor mania in the Memphis metro area. Yeah. Got to the point where, the hedge funds weren't standing out with a 25 grand cash offer, right? That's because interesting. Other people were doing that as well. Yeah. Um, so they went way high uh, and she decided not to do it. Um, we only swung for the fences because we thought it was under listed. Yep. At the begin with. Yep. It appraised at 2055. So our nah. instincts were right. There you go. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so her decision to be timid of the appraisal made it where she did not accept uh, the hedge fund money, and I was able to close on the deal, you know, at market value for that's awesome. Uh, two hundred five. Yeah. Well, I, I'm always just curious. So, so what is this two hundred five? So, tell us a little bit about the two hundred five house, the sure. unicorn, right? Is it three bedroom, four bedroom? How old is it? I, I don't know Memphis, so yeah. I don't I don't really know what's what's what. Yeah. So it's um, I, that's it. actually I don't know its age. I need to look that up. I probably do know its age. I just could look it up real quick. Yeah. Um, the it's a three bedroom, two bath. Okay. One story? 1,050 square feet. One story. Okay. 1,050 square feet, uh, tiled living room and kitchen uh, and hallway, carpeted. Garage or carport? It's got a, it actually doesn't. Most of, my, most of the time I look for a two-car garage. Mm-hmm. This one does not. It just has okay. uh, a driveway path. Okay. That's fine. Um, we probably, well, when we get to the point where we need to add, add some capital to the, to the property, we probably will add a carport. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, pretty common. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, you know, let's talk about the property being lucky, but also just having a lucky previous owner. She was a single mom who put her heart and soul into the house. Wow. I think she did more maintenance to the house than I've done to my house. <laughs> but, um, that's awesome. and so inspection was flawless, you know, so I, you know, 
I did put in, I had, I had no appraisal, but I had an inspection clause. Sure. Um, but inspection was flawless. Um, she's done a lot of great, you know, she's upgraded all the light fixtures and all of the doorknobs and all of the hardware and the wow. cabinets. And so like I, I walked in and so far my make ready cost has been four gallons of paint. <laughs> that's a low, man. That's, yeah. that's pretty low. That's pretty, but it's not bad. It, it's not uh, bad. I'm going to have to go buy a fifth gallon because we're, oh, darn. we've decided to paint a bathroom. Right? <laughs> yeah. that's so, awesome. What do you think you'll rent that for? So, yeah. So um, that's, that's where I'm also, again, once again, taking advantage of just kind of uh, in any market you can, these vents are, they've exploded. Yeah. Um, I'm asking for 1700. I feel pretty confident that I'll get that. That's I've awesome. Gotten, um, I've gotten a few applicants that have not, uh, they didn't read my upfront, like save your money if you don't have these. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I've had, um, I had a good, we had an open house yesterday and I had a pretty good showing. Cool. A couple of people. So hopefully I'll get some applications. So I, I'm curious, the 1700, was that more or less or the same than you kind of budgeted when you built your spreadsheet? Like, were you planning so, for yeah, 1600 first, or? Yeah. So the, oh, that's a great question. Let, I have it right here. The first time that I appraised, uh, the first time that I assessed the house, Yeah. Um, I actually didn't, I... You're, you're not going to like it, but I was like, oh, okay. I can accept average in the best neighborhood in the city. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the first time I found it, I was like, it's going to be a 9% yield. Okay. Um, and that was with 25% down. Sure. Um, only 25% down. I was trying to get my father on that. Yeah. Well, because my father came in and because he's at a completely different place. Yeah. Uh, he put in such a large down payment that he drove my yield up. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so... Uh, after closing, after retabulating everything, um, you know, it went from a 9% yield um, by myself doing it without a partner to a 35% yield with my father. Wow. And so, um, yeah, not a, not a bad, not a bad play to, to end up with a 35 yield, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I think so, I, I would do a 35% yield every day. No problem. <laughs> yeah, if I could find that every day. That's just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my, my I, only regret is my father doesn't have enough cash to just constantly be doing Yeah, he doesn't want to do another one. <laughs> Let's do another but, one, Dad. Yeah, and, and it was actually funny. The day before we closed, another house on the street hit the market. Um, and it didn't look, you know, as nice as the, as the one we found. So um, even though I was like, man, I could just do it again and grab another house on the street. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I didn't even... Uh, they closed viewings on day one because they had so many, so many offers. That's crazy. Throw, throw our name in the hat. But yeah. Yeah, it's so, crazy. You know, so it was an interesting kind of final. So what do you, what was that first rent plan? Sorry, I don't, I must've missed yeah. it. Oh, so the, so the, yeah. So the rent plan is I, I looked up open rentals in the market and I don't know if all of them have the hedge funds watermark, but more than a few do. Sure. So I'm listed at 1700, I'm listed uh, $200 underneath anything in Carville. Right. No, but was that your plan from day one? Like when it first hit your radar, you're like, it's still in the deal phase. Were you always planning for 17? Uh, yeah. So I think, okay. I, I think I started at, I think I actually started at, uh, maybe 1550 or 1600. Ah. Yeah. I knew, you... Zillow, I knew Zillow was off. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, the, I, what I'm, and it's worked out for me in, in Mississippi so far. What, I'm, yeah. what I intend to do is, you know, be targeted underneath yeah. uh, whatever the rest of the, the rents are. Yeah. And hopefully that drives through. To, to that's awesome. Because every, every, you know, that's what I see a lot, at least in my portfolio right now is rents are, I can't remember the last time I got, I guess I've always been conservative on rents the last year. Rents yeah. have been higher and everything. Ac actual rent has been higher than budget. And if you're following my course, that obviously helps the yield, right? An extra hundred bucks that falls right to the bottom line, right? You know, hundred bucks times twelve—that's an extra twelve hundred bucks on your yield calculation. So, um, it's it's. I've never seen a market like this for rents, especially single-family homes, apartments. Right. Totally different game. Houses, insane. Um, so, what I want to transition to is is really provide advice and coaching for others out there that maybe there are markets that hedge funds or California money have just focused on, right? They've become. Right. I want to own in Memphis. And I, I remember I did a conversation with Roofstock probably months ago about Memphis, and it did seem to be one of those markets where, where California money is coming out. And what I want to do is I relate this to my experience, because that's all I ever do. Um, 
I remember the day in 2010 that hedge funds hit my market, right? So again, 2010, very different time. Prices were falling. Really, the only people doing deals were cash buyers because everybody else was scared, right? So prices were whack, 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 whack. Um, but the day the hedge funds came in, um, it changed and it started to, to pivot. So uh, what I had to do very quickly is I had to figure out their buy box. What do they buy, right? And this is what you listed in, the, in our private Facebook group, right? right? As I remember, 1980s or newer, um, price point, right? 300 grand. Right. So what I want people to hear from this conversation is even if there's somebody in your market that's a dominant player, the watermark, as we called it earlier, um, you don't have to run away. Right. I think too many people run into that. They they go, oh, woe is me. I can't get anything. It's not fair. And really what you need to do is you just need to do a little bit more work. Because what I have found is deep pockets, California money, hedge fund money is actually dumb money. They're dumb. They're out of the area. They're not doing the work. Uh, they're running some silly program, very likely. They're overpaying. And um, it's dumb money. Uh, so yeah, I would yeah, do that's, that's that's what I heard. I don't mean to interrupt you. That's right. I heard as well is that, you know, there is most likely, um, yes, they are using an agent. Yes, he's able to have one or two Lamborghinis. <laughs> um, but uh, they are basically running an algorithm. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as the property hits within an hour, that the property has an offer. Yeah, right? it's all it's all We're automated. Just, yeah. We just have we just have such mania right now yeah. in the area that p- people are matching it. So they're trying to stand out. Yeah. And I would also say, I actually had kind of that moment that you're coaching about. I had that like moment of despair of, I'm not going to get a house where I want to buy, right? And in, in any of the suburbs of Memphis. Mm-hmm. And I called up my one of my agent teams and we had a, just kind of a frank conversation there. Like, look, I, all the agents are talking about this. This yeah. is true. This, these are problems. And, but they were like, but they don't close on every one, exactly. right? And so that was the other thing to understand was, yes, they're there. Yes, they're in the pool. They're a major player, but they've only closed on 20, 23 to 25%. I think the numbers I got was 75 out of the last 300 deals in Memphis. They were the, they were the close, right? I, yeah. I can't, yeah. So then of, of course, my agent was trying to tell me like, go change where you fish. And I was going, well, they can't get every one. Let's swing for another one. <laughs> yeah, I know. This, this is important. I, I, it, a lot of this is mindset. And, and yeah. again, I'm very clear that my superpower is I get excited every day looking for the next fish. Some people go like, I've already put the wa- I've already put my line in the water seven days in a row and I don't have a fish. Woe is me. Yeah. And I'm excited for the eighth and the 80th and the 800th day. So I realize that's a superpower, whatever it is about me that I get excited hunting for the fish. But there's a couple of things you said there that I hope people hear. You got to do, the, so know their buy box, fish around them, right? Every time I've run into hedge funds <clears throat> and dumb money, they don't look for oddball properties. The two bedroom, one bath is the greatest example. I can't tell you how many two bedroom, one baths I bought from 2011 to 2013 when hedge funds were hot in my market. I think that might have been, I think 90% of my purchases during those two years were two bedroom, one baths. And oh, by the way, folks, about a third of those were actually three bedrooms. They're just mislisted or they, or they were missing a closet and they were called dens. They're running algorithms. Their algorithms don't catch human mistakes. Their algorithms don't look for exceptions. I bought a two bedroom, one bath listed that was 1800 square feet. Think about that. Two bedroom, one bath, 1,800 square feet. Missed the algorithm. Nailed it. It actually is a four bedroom today for me, right? So do the work. And then second, I love the last thing you said. These dumb money lock up properties, but they don't give a shit about their reputation. They will back out of over half the properties. So what I would do, if you find a property you like, is I would put a two-week tracker on it. And I would call the agent back. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? You want to be that person that gets the offer because that agent who's the listing agent, and I would call the listing agent, right? They're going to get a little stressed because they're going to have to put it back out. I have bought, oh, I don't know, probably 30% of the properties I got during that period was just follow-up on pendings. 
I want to be the first option. The listing agent does trust me. No listing agent wants to throw a property back on the market and have another 30 offers. They are so tired. They are counting on the commission check. So folks, be the right answer. Follow up. You can, if you have a market, don't be discouraged by dumb money. Dumb money is lazy money. Just work harder, work smarter. And oh, by the way, the other thing to realize is dumb money usually gets full and they start doing bad deals and then they pull out. They won't be there forever. So go build relationships, close on the deals that you're done, be the problem solver and follow up. Yeah, I'll just add one thing to that, Michael, that popped in my mind as you said that. Like your, your network matters, right? Yes. One, of the, one of the factors for my unicorn was that the listing agent had a relationship with my agent. It matters. It matters. And if you're local, trust me, lots of local people are mad at dumb money and California money. So if you work that to your advantage, hey, you want to sell to a local, don't you? You don't want to sell. Use every angle you can. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, that was a conversation I had with the previous owner. Like she yeah, was of course. Like, you know, uh, she was, you know, found a property in, in Millington, which is a, another one of our areas. And uh, we were just going over questions over the property and answering, you know, any questions I had. And I just, you know, she, I just said, I listen, you know, I'm a married man. I'm very faithful, but I could kiss you for going local. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. And she was like, well, I appreciate it. I'm Thank good. <laughs> I'm good. Oh man, that's awesome. Well, hey, do me a favor and talk about the importance of the private Facebook group. I'm, I'm, I just, yeah. I love that group, but I'd love to hear what others are saying. Cause obviously it's mine and I'm so biased, but I think yeah. it's, I think it's a well, I'll tell, I'll give you my, just kind of my input into it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I started listening to the videos, you know, back in March and I signed up, I think I signed up for the course in April, right okay. before the first time you said, Hey, sign up now, or it's going to go up. Mm, I, yep. I was like, I'm signing up now. Yeah. Right. I like um, to save money. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so right off the bat, uh, my impression is that it's been fantastic. You know, you start off with just a hi, my name so and so, and I'm investing in this neighborhood, or you know, and you'll get a few likes, you'll get a few comments. Yeah, I've met I've met a realtor from Memphis. I've met another investor. Awesome. Who hopefully is closing on an off market deal pretty soon. It's going to add to your score. Woohoo! Um, you know the the Facebook Live chats you do on Saturday are fantastic. That's um, great. I usually if I'm if I'm at my computer, I'm usually on YouTube and then hop right over to uh, the Facebook chat. Nice. Um, but I, what I've really enjoyed uh, is being a part of an active part of you. you yeah, know, please. Yes. You and Dion, I'll share this. You and Dion uh, had a video on one of my questions. You know, yeah. my, my, my first property, my other property, I've got a tenant who's been late a couple of times, just told I me remember. she's late again. Um, and the question was, but I'm, and I'm looking at watermarks in the area, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm renting at 1500. You know, the market saying 1900, 2000, I need to go do the binder strategy with my tenant, right? Amen. And so, um, yeah, so that actually I plan on doing next week, hopefully. Um, but, you know, so listening to your videos, posting on comments, you know, and getting, you know, people like, Matt, the mortgage guy, and uh, our, our REI mom, and yeah. Eon, and Matt, the lumberjack, um, and yourself all commenting and, and, and it's fun. To, yeah. to the conversations. It's fantastic. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it is a great place to be. You do a great job admitting to keep negativity yeah. out. Um, I know how to delete. <laughs> I would say, you know, for those who haven't bought the course, you know, uh, I realize now that it is gone up. Um, but uh, even at two ninety nine, uh, it's in a it's an extreme value, and yeah. um, and you know just for just for that alone, just developing that connection with people there, uh, while also so at some level have you know developing more than your face on YouTube, yeah, he you has know, a face on YouTube with with the people that uh, help you provide your content, um, you know it's. It's been really, it's been really cool. 
Uh, I love that. Thank you for that. And yeah, folks, again, I encourage active behavior in the group. Uh, it will stay positive. Um, but yeah, the, I love people celebrating. I love introductory emails because those are increasing and people are piling on welcoming. Awesome. I love po people posting deals, seeing the encouragement. I love questions. There are no dumb questions. And we we're you know, it's private. I control it. Everybody's like-minded and we speak the same vocabulary. So um, I'm so thrilled. We'll, we'll be over a thousand people in that group in no time. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just say, buy the book. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. And leave a five-star review. Don't forget. Get one of these cards. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Do me a favor. Hold up that card. I want to take your picture. See if I can sure. see how it looks. Ah, so, sorry. I got to. What's my phone password? Go to my, sorry, I'm not, yeah, here we go. Yeah, no problem. Here we go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, John. Well, thank you very much for reaching out, giving us some time. Happy Father's Day again. And uh, thank you for being an active member of the course, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. You got it.